Green Cooling scores with the 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. Well, I tell you something. It's Wednesday evening. It's Wednesday evening, folks. It's time for the 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. My name's Dave Parkinson, joined as ever by Steve Beach. How are you doing, Steve? You okay, mate? Yeah, I'm doing fine, thanks, Parky. And it's actually still light outside. It, it is still light. We're getting towards midsummer yeah. now. In fact, I'll be honest with the temperatures, what we've had the last few days, I think this is summer. I think this is it. Mm, I'm, I can't join you on that yet, Parker. I mean, some of this rain's got to go away first before I declare it anywhere near summer. No, 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 no. <laughs> we, we're in. We, we've heard it. We're in for 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 hotter, wetter conditions. Well, actually, just round the corner from uh, where we are, uh, well, not too far away, uh, there was a post on Twitter, uh, Latchford Albion at training. They actually changed rugby training, training to water polo because the pitch was that <laughs> flooded. It's an interesting photo. See, uh, and, but this is why we've had this conversation before. It's why it's built on stilts, that, that, uh, that stand. Well, and you laughed at me when well, I was telling you this and I was regaling you with these uh, with these tales. Well, I would and say, Aidy took a bit of a mick out of us as well, didn't he, saying about uh, structural. We're talking about oh, structures. Oh, yeah, architectural, structural. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. well, the pitch needs to go on stilts as well, I think, because... <laughs> <laughs> the feet are dry, but there's no players on the pitch. But and it's not just a, it's it's around uh, everywhere, uh, certainly from a northwest, uh, northeast, and uh, just north I point got, of view. I've got to admit, though, Steve, it's not stopped the rugby league, or it's not stopped the majority of the no, rugby league. No, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we've got a busy show for you. So in just a, a few minutes' time, we're going to start off with action from Cumbria, telling you what went on this past weekend. Uh, we'll then move on and chat about the Northwest men's competitions. We've got a lovely interview that uh, West Horton Lions have sent us with uh, their boss, Sam Pennington. Uh, we'll have a roundup of all the action from the uh, cup competitions that are taking place in Yorkshire at this moment in time before moving on to uh, what happened this weekend with the Lions. I got to have a chat with the uh, Open Age head coach, Paul Couch, and... I got to chat with Dom Weir as well. We'll then round things up with uh, what happened in the National Conference League last week, including exclusive audio highlights. Yes, you might have only caught half a game um, due to uh, other conditions and uh, uh, gremlins. Gremlins in there, you'd have thought it. No, no, I'm not going to bite the park. No, no, not going to no. bite. Um, but that was as uh, East Leeds took on. Lee East. It was certainly yeah. one which confused us at times and commentary. It was a tongue twister, I think, indeed. But it was a cracking game. It was a good game. Really it was, was. A, it was, a, really was a really was. good game, yeah. And, and we've got uh, reaction from the East Leeds head coach, Rob Roberts, as well to come. Right, so I think that, first of all, we are going to start uh, with what happened over in Cumbria. So, uh, again, many thanks to Lorraine de Graff for the information that she sends to every single week. Well, I was looking in, I'm not sure, I think it might have been last week's uh, League Express. Actually, a photo of her. So I now know what she looks like. Um, she does a tremendous job. Sending she does stuff, an excellent she? job. Excellent yeah. job, yeah. yeah. So, these are the results. So, Dissington A24, Glasson Rangers nil. This game was awarded to Dissington. Uh, Glasson A didn't have a team to put out there. Uh, Dissington A will now be at home to Wathbro A in the quarter-final of the Fur Press Printers Cumberland Cup. That's going to be played on the 22nd of June. Then in the Holman Iggleson Premier Division, it was Maryport 52, Egremont Rangers nil. So that's a huge result for Maryport. Congratulations to them. It looks like Blake Miller was once upon, well was once again in all the points. He scored uh, two tries and kicked four goals as well. All the tries go in the way of Jack Shepard, Danny Dryden, Liam Anderson, Chris Ivison, Scott Atherton, Ellis Nixon, once upon a time of the Lions programme, and Sam Forrester with Shane Williams also getting on the score sheet as well. I mentioned before about Blake Miller kicking four goals. Well, Craig Foster joined him in the goal kicking ranks as well, adding two conversions. The man of the match for Maryport was the aforementioned Ellis Nixon. And then from a, an Egremont point of view, James Newton picked up the best. Uh, and it all started off in the fourth minute when Jack Shepard went over. And then the, the 
action continued, regular tries at regular intervals right the way through to the very last minute when Sam Forrester scored the last try to get it over there as well. The uh, only other game that did take place at the weekend in Cumbria was um, a competition win for Walthbro Hornets A-side up against Askham. So we've mentioned before Askham coming back into the uh, the Cumbria League um, and sort of reforming, uh, which I'm really, really pleased to see, uh, although they probably won't want to be reminded of this score. So they lost by uh, 50, 58 points to nil. Scored 11 tries in total as well, to be honest, as well did uh, Wathbro Hornets, including two for... Jamie Devine, two for Luke Spivy, two for Matt Sibbald, who also kicked six goals as well. Other tries going in the way of Jack Megan, who's played first team for Wathbrow. We yeah. commentated on him in the cup game. That's right, yeah. Uh, well, one of the cup games that we covered. Uh, Luke Davison, uh, our young friend Devon Sharp, Devon Sharp got in for a try. Uh, Nat Dugan and Greg Rooney also scoring tries with a goal kicked by Peter Caddy, who's also played a lot of first-team rugby for yeah. Pro Hornets down the years as well. So that was a game which they led by 18 points to nil at half-time. Uh, Devon Sharp got the nod for the home man of the match. Uh, Dale Lampton was the best for the visitors. Uh, but yeah, that's a pretty resounding result, that, isn't it? 58 it is. points to nil. That's huge. That just shows, just shows you the strength of the club as a whole, doesn't it? I mean, I know the first team's having a what we might call a little bit of a wobble from, from those standards at, at the moment. But they certainly got strength in depth there. They're, uh, uh, you know, you, it, it's great to score all those tries, but the big thing there is that zero. Yeah. You yeah. Know, that, that's keep, keeping your concentration for a, a good 80 minutes, that isn't it? Well, I was, looking, um, I was looking down the reserves results that have been happening in, uh, you know, the pro ranks. And uh, <laughs> I happened upon the result between, I think it was Wigan, up against Lee Leopard's yeah. reserves. And that one finished 50 points to 36. Where's the tackle bags? Yep. Yeah. No. Somebody's not been doing the defensive coaching. <laughs> <that. laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Wathborough Hornets coming away with a resounding victory at home there against Askham. 58 points to nil. Uh, and, and that's uh, it, it's short but sweet this week is the, uh, the Cumbrian Roundup. Yeah, but uh, as I said, there's still games on up there and considering now the weather has been up and down. So we're, we're moving on to next back. Eh? Well, I, I just, just want to do a, a quick mention, actually. Mm. So obviously when we're recording this and putting it out, it's midweek, it's Wednesday. Uh, this Wednesday was meant to be the big launch of the new under-18s competition that they're going to have running uh, in West Cumbria this coming season. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately... There's been that much weather that's been put down. Mm. There's been uh, games that have been getting called off, you know. So it's one of those false starts, unfortunately, yeah. as far as that competition. I am really, really pleased that there is an under-18s comp which has started up in Cumbria, by the way. Yeah. Because um, I think it's something that they've needed. There's been all this rugby league up until the age of 16 and then players have been going into first teams. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and now, as we all know, when you're heading into National Conference League now, you've got to be 17 before you can make your debut. Yeah. So really, you should, unless you get a special dispensation, you shouldn't be taking a field yeah, you know, yeah. like at that. I mean, I'm sure they'll look at it if you've got absolutely nobody else that can play. But there is safeguarding issues potentially, you know, with like younger players. I suppose yeah. you know they've got to be they've got to be careful, aren't they? You know, so if you're thinking about it, you could have a 42 year old prop forward slugging a 16 year old, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing is as well, you need you need we, we talk about that pathway being there, and and that's that age that we always talk about about you know. A, academies and, and and scholarships and all those types of things where players can easily get to get lost uh, if you've got nothing there from an 18s you know to, from them to move up to 18s wise then there's a bigger chance of you know people getting lost out there there, there is but i also think mm. as well it's a it's it's a huge jump to go from mm, yeah, very much, yeah yeah 
into first team and yeah. playing open age. So yeah. this is a this is an interesting bridging competition. Mm. It's uh, it's long overdue in my opinion, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how it develops. Yeah. And I think it's a real positive step amongst the yeah. uh, certainly amongst the West Cumbrian clubs, yeah. uh, and maybe points to the the efforts that they have. I mean, when when you look at when you look at kind of like academy academy players you know or, or you look at younger age groups that have come through the lion system um there's always a good variety of players that have come from that yeah i, I totally agree the, the other thing as well a couple of the teams that we've looked at uh down obviously the, further down near the, near us uh who obviously they have 18 age groups and yes. 18 competition and we're seeing now there are various uh, clubs that are bringing some of those 18 year olds well, they've identified actually these are the lads who could compete in here and, and, and you know be safe and not be out of place. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and get let them get that experience. Not, I'm, I'm sure uh, they won't run them throughout the full season. They'll, they'll you know cherry pick is you know when they, they move in and that. Uh, and the other thing is, as you get your open edge players, your older player, players going away, you need these guys you know to be able to to come in. So if they've then got some experience, even if it's a couple of matches. It's that. It's not just a game, is it? It's sort of like the game day experience as well, and it's it can be a big change from being with just all eighteen year olds or all sixteen year olds or seventeen year olds. Well, well, this is something that certainly, if you if you recall, a couple of weeks ago when I was chatting to Devon Sharp, mm. um, when he'd taken part in one of the lion sessions, um, and I said about. You know, do you get? I mentioned about other players that were trialing for the Lions Open Age. Yeah. And I said, does that has that helped your development? What do you think mm-hmm. about being, you know, sharing dressing rooms with these guys? You know, sure, seeing how they prepare for games, how they play, how they are on the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said, like, it, it's really helping to bring his game on as yeah. well. So, you know, that's what it's all about. Isn't it, it certainly is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I next want to take us into the Northwest men's competitions, uh, and work we're going to start with the Steve. Uh, well, it was the cup competitions in the Northwest men's, uh, much the same as uh, the Yorkshire men's as well. And we're going to start with with uh, the cup, as they as they say, uh, kicking off with uh, Oral St James. They were up against Foley Lane, and it was Oral St James thirty eight, uh, Foley twelve. So. Uh, um, Competitive enough for Folly, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Then we've got Alton Farmworth on it. They were up against Salford City Roosters. That was 24 0. So uh, I don't know whether that was the actual score or whether it was uh, a, a forfeit. Uh, Blackbrook, they were up against Hindley. And this was a close one. It was Blackbrook 28, Hindley 22. <sighs> that is close, that. Uh, of uh, course, Hindley were in the uh, Premier Division last year, weren't they? They were. Uh, and then we've got West Orton Lions. Well, they were up against Latchford Albion. Uh, and obviously, Latchford Albion, we know were the guys down there pr- pretty well. Uh, well, it was West Orton Lions 28, Latchford Albion 16. So this is one that you would really have fancied Latchford Albion for, wouldn't you? That's I right, suppose. Yeah. Um, uh, so So this, this was one which was, I, again, perhaps a little bit of a surprise when uh, we got the result through. Yeah. Very, very much so. I mean, and as, as you say, I think you would have expected it. And but I think that's what happens with the the, the northwest. Well, not just the northwest men's, but I think the cup competitions, etc. Whether it be the, here, with them being sort of early on in in the season as as they start. I mean, some teams haven't found the feet, and other ones have, you know, the straight out of the blocks and and, and off, as it were. Uh, we've got a bit of post match reaction from this one. So, our man in the know caught up with Sam Pennington, the West Orton Lions coach, after a victory over Latchford. So joined again by uh, head coach Sam Pennington. Sam, um, good to be back up and playing. Yeah, it's good, good to get a game on at the Den as well. Um, whether we had, the weather we've had recently has not been great, so a lot of postponed games. We've had to postpone the last two. Um, but we've got to start to get today on. Um, but yeah, really good game. And good to uh, get a win in the Cup. Yeah, massive. Um, Latchford come the pre- Premier Division side, so obviously we're not the favourites in this game. I set out a simple game plan. It's a basic basic shape. You stick to it, but if you run your lines well, then, then we'll go well. And every single person stuck to it. Uh, I said, make sure you're defending for your man next year. And I think every single person stepped up today, and every single one deserved that shirt. Yeah, I was going to say so. 
The lads just seem to do all the basics really well today. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think our set completion must, must have been really high. Um, and there was a few early on, and then when we got when we got the chance, chance of, as we said, we didn't cut it out. Um, let's make sure everything's in our favour and we don't give anything to them that's too cheap. Yeah, no, it was a good win. Um, so looking forward then to next week, back to league games. Uh, what do you think of Cuthbert's next week? Yeah, Cuthbert's away. It should be interesting. We've only played one league game this year. Um, struggled with a 5 10 loss at Burtonwood. But um, yeah, we know, we, know, we know about Cuthbert's as a big physical side. We just need to go out there and match them. Um, go with the same matches, same game plan. We do half. We focus on ourselves instead of focusing on, on other teams. All right, go well. Thanks, Sam. Cheers, mate. So it was great to hear that, wasn't it? And it sounds like uh, they, they carried out his game plan to absolute perfection. Well, that's what, that's what you want. And I, I know we were talking about uh, uh, some people not actually listen to the, the instructions that they've been given to carry out on the, on the rugby field from some of the things that you've been doing over the last pr- few weeks. That's it. But obviously the, they've done it and it's, it's, it's come out, it's been fruitful, which, which just shows that well, if we listen to the coach, look what we can do. And I think as well, it kind of shows um, where the potential is for West Orton Lions. They're a, a club that we have featured on this show, albeit a couple of years ago. Um, I never remember the conversations which we had. The den, as he called it. That's right, yeah. The clubhouse wasn't finished, was it? Mm. They had to, the, 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 it was just in that post-Covid era, wasn't it, where um, they ended up being a few thousand pounds short, actually, of yeah. being able to complete the project. Project. It is now completed. Yeah. It's now a lovely clubhouse. The club is going from strength to strength. Sam sounds like he's really into it and he's really enjoying the rugby. And it sounds like uh, everybody's reacting to that. Uh, and you know, I, that's a really good win for him against yeah. Latchford. Excellent. That will really give him, uh, you know, sort of confidence-wise. I mean, I'm not saying that that they need it, but it does give you that buzz, doesn't oh, it? Oh, definitely. And yeah, uh, yeah. And, and interesting that they did like a dead, dead quick preview as well and uh, sent Cuthbert's next up which uh, you know is is always an interesting sort of game and Mm -hmm. also uh, you know I note that he said they've only been able to play the one league game so far so you could have argued that they could have been a little bit underdone heading yeah, into yeah, very much. He- heading into this. You know, I mean, Definitely. you've got you've got Hull in the pro ranks who it don't matter. They seem to be playing every week and getting worse. So <laughs> you know, but, but, but uh, you know, these guys they've they've obviously stuck to the guns and a fair play to him. It's a great result. That yeah. Um, moving on, we got uh, Sphinx. They were uh, welcoming the Charlie Panthers and uh, they uh, had a big win. It was uh, Sphinx fifty eight, Charlie Panthers four. Great win. Another good win that. Erst Finch is scoring some points this season. I'd say some big points, and obviously from a defensive point of view as well, that's, that's absolutely superb. Uh, and then finally, we've got Tatooine Crusaders. Uh, they were up against Shevington Sharks. Well, it was Shevington Sharks who uh, went away with a win. Um, it was a, a nil 24, so uh, I've got a feeling that might have been a, uh, a, a forfeit result. So uh, that's everything in the, uh, in the cup. I'm moving on, and well, I think it's the uh, the trophy next, which is uh, so yeah. So we've got we've got three um, three cups that are being played, right? Where we've got the cup, the trophy, and the shield. That's right. And this is uh, something that is uh, replicated both in Northwest Men's and in the Yorkshire leagues. And so, as I already said, moving to the trophy, it was Ashton Burrs A up against Hindpool Tigers, and Hindpool Tigers took the win there, at twenty four points to nil. Banky Bulls, they were up against West Bank Burrs. This was an absolute cracker. Okay. Uh, and it was Banky Bulls 22, West Bank Burrs 10. <sighs> so right. A, a good win there for Banky Bulls. Yeah. Who, as I said last season, you, know, you saw them going from strength to strength and uh, and they're just continuing it. Then Blackpool Scorpions, they went uh, or came down to uh, Wigan Springview and it was Wigan Springview 12, Blackpool Scorpions 24. That's a great result huge, for the Scorpions, huge game, isn't it? One. Yeah, really good win and uh, they'll go back and that that will make them feel really good. Uh, uh, obviously rock solid defence. Yeah, <laughs> you know, see what you did there. Yeah, yeah. They've had their ups and downs, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, certainly on, on the. Life's on the not always a pleasure beach. That's not what you're a, saying. Hey, no, it's a roller coaster, <laughs> apparently. 
Uh, and we've got Gars with Stags. They were up against Newton Storm. Well, it was Gars with Stags 24, Newton Storm 16. Oh, that's a great result for Gars. Gars with Stags taking the uh, uh, at the uh, the win there. And did I see something at the weekend as well? Where Paul Lachlan, who is the coach, that's been for a while too. O- yeah, obviously a, a long stand. He's a mm. player that you know you would have seen play oh, yeah, many yeah, times yeah. pulling on that. Uh, Saints that, and Great Britain. And yeah, the church, yeah. yeah. Well, I saw something in saying that it was 40 years since he made his St. Helens debut at the weekend. Mm. I, w- I, wonder if he, I wonder if he thought back in 1984 when he pulled on that famous yeah, Red V. Would have been, yeah. Yeah, for the very first time. Yeah. You know, the very first game of that illustrious career that you, you said was, uh, you know, he got to the very top and played for Great Britain, um, you know, was involved in, in squads that you know, won competitions and things like that, wasn't he, throughout yeah. the throughout the days. And and I was I was sort of wondering whether yeah, at that age he would have thought in forty years time I'll still be involved in rugby league. Yeah, and he is. I mean fair play. And I, do you know what I've I've stood on the touchline and watched him uh when they've been playing a couple of times I get stags uh, against uh, Newton. And he's one of these coaches who's very quiet. Okay. And he does you know, he watches it and then he knows when to you know sort of just interject himself and say, this is what needs to change, you know, this is what you need to do. You know, he's, he's a really, really good watcher of the game. I mean, well, you, obviously we see some coaches and they come off the touchline's horse, they've been shouting that much. <laughs> and not, all, not always at the players, I might say. Uh, so there you go, that's a, a good win for the uh, Gars with Stags against Newton Storm. Then it was Caddishead Rhinos, Rhinos, they were welcoming Waterhead Warriors A, well, he, uh, it was a, a tough day for Cadiz-Ed Rhinos because it was Cadiz-Ed Rhinos 4, Waterhead Warriors A 64. Oh, that's a Huge massive result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, good win for Waterhead Warriors. Again, not just the score, but obviously keeping them, Cadiz-Ed, down to just the one score. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's obviously pointing, you know, everything in the in the right direction mm. for Waterhead, isn't it? You know, it's been a, overall a very strong club, you know, with them obviously turning the corner with their results in National Conference League recently as well. And uh, and finally, we've got Wigan St. Jude's uh, 36, and they were up against Clockface Miners A, and that was 10. So St. Jude's 36, Clockface Miners 10. Again, pointing to some strength in depth. Uh, I know when I've spoken to people at St Jude's, they've been really pleased with the numbers that have been turning up for for training. The um, yeah, that's a, that's a quality result that for Jude's. I'm, I'm glad to see, you know, clubs coming back and and the, the being reported good numbers at training. It, it does point that perhaps in some instances these people that I guess I call in the end for, you know, um, community rugby league, mm. uh, they're, they're exaggerating it, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, very much so, I, I think. Uh, so, yeah, so that's the, the cup and trophy results. There was one league game in Division 4, and that was between Chester Gladiators and Portico Vine. And you'd have loved this one, Parker. You, you like a big a big score, close game, don't you? Yeah, but don't, don't tell me it was 36-50. It, it was close. It was close. No, okay. it, it was Chester Gladiators 36, Portico Vine 20. Oh, really? See, that's my sort of high-scoring yeah. game. I do like... Uh, you're right. I do like a high-scoring mm. game, but that that's, that, that sounds like a good one. Yeah, it, it certainly was. Uh, I couldn't find any result for Cultures Eagles versus uh, Bolton. I've got a feeling that might have been uh, uh, cancelled because of the, the, weather. the weather, as they say. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, big win that for uh, Chester Gladiators. But from a Portico Vine point of view, obviously the, the, the new open edge into the uh, North West Men's this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not too shabby scoring 20 points. Um, that'll stand them in good stead. So, yeah, so that's the uh, the North West Men's uh, fixtures, uh, sorry, results this week. Uh, fixtures uh, for next week, kicking off Saturday the 13th of April, Premier Division. Well, we see Shavington Sharks, they're going to Blackbrook. Well, that seems like it'd be a standout fixture, that. Mm, yeah. yeah. Hurst Finch, they welcome Holton Farmers on it. That, Thank God, that could that be a standout be, fixture. Yeah. That will be a standout fixture. Uh, Isham Atoms, well, they welcome Latchford Latchford Albion. That's a standout fixture. Uh, that'll be a long trip, I know that. Uh, Otto St. James, uh, they're up against Ashton Burrs. Oh, are they? 
that'll be a standout fixture as well. Oh, so yeah, that, that's a that's a tasty line of Premier Division uh, games there. There's not a bad one there at no, all, is there? No, no, no they're cra- that's a cracking fixture list that for the weekend in Prem. Then we're going into Division One. Oh, we've got Ulverston. They're welcome Inley. Charlie Panthers. They're just wel- said that again. Ulverston, <laughs> when welcome Hinley. You see, I thought you, you, I thought you'd settled into almost a Wigan accent there when they said they welcome Hinley. Hinley, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's it. Uh, lost my place now. Ca- see, Charlie Panthers. It was, it, was the, it was the shock of her shock accusing of being him Wigan. of having a Wigan accent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charlie Panthers. Uh, they're up against Burton Wood Bridge. Uh, that's with Crusaders eh? they travel all the way up to Dalton Goulburn Park side uh, go over or oh, they welcome Salford City Roosters and West Dort Lions as we said before they will be away to uh, Wigan St Cuthbert's mm-hmm. then Division 2 Ashton Burrs A uh, will play Newton Storm that'll be a good game Wigan Spring View will play uh, Hindpool Tigers West Bank Burrs, they go for a, a nice trip over to Rochdale, Mayfield A. And Roos Pioneers, well done up against Waterhead Warriors A. And in Division 3, Lee East A travel to uh, Day Out at Blackpool, where they play the Scorpions. Clockface Miners A will play Bank Key Bulls. Uh, Higgins Short take on Runcorn Highfield. That should be a good mm. Wigan St. Jude's uh, uh, take on Cadishead Rhinos. And in Division 4, uh, this should be a good one because it's Head Up Warriors against Hoddle St. James A. So oh, that's, right, okay. that's uh, very much uh, what you could call a derby match there. Yeah, just a bit. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool Lizards welcome Cultures Eagles. Portico Vine, well, they welcome Langworthy Reds. And uh, Bolton, they travel to West Orton Lions A. So that's the roundup of the, the Northwest men's. I know that uh, Bolton have been quite vocal on social media again, uh, trying to push the club and uh, yeah, getting people yeah. to, uh, to to sort of back them and to go down and experience what they have to offer as well. Uh, yeah, if you do a, a search for Bolton RLFC on Twitter, you'll find out all the details of the club. Uh, now, we're crossing over the Pennines. We're going over that big gap, oh, those big hills, up Steve. Over the hills, yeah. Over the hills. And we have the results, first of all, from the cup competition. So I will read through the, uh, the, the sort of the shield and the trophy That's doesn't right, it, yeah. that they have over there in, in Yorkshire. So uh, uh, cup competition results. Osset Trinity Tigers 22, King Cross Park 0. Bradford Dudley Hill 18, Siddle Academy nil. That is an outstanding yeah. result, that, for Bradford Dudley Hill. It sounds like they're starting to get their act together again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah. I'm all for that because, um, you know, you, go, you only go back a, um, you know, a, a few short years and they were competing right at the top of the Premier Division with Bradford Dudley Hill. And then if you go back as well, um, when the team switched to summer, I think they were part of that Division 3. Mm-hmm. So the Division 3, which came into being, which yeah. was, uh, I think it ended up spawning clubs like uh, Coventry Bears. Yeah. Uh, you know, which is a prelude yeah. to the Midland Hurricane team that you see running yeah, around yeah. at League One level as it speaks now. Um, this sounds like it was an outstanding game, by the way. Fryston Warriors 22, Murfield 26. Westgate Common getting back to winning ways up at Stanley, uh, Stanley Rangers. Said that was a bit of a um, bit of a derby mm. grudge match, that, between those two. Uh, it was Newsom Panthers 8, Charleston Rovers 24, and then Cutsyke 24, Hunslet 12. Uh, and again, if I then go and have a look what happened in the trophy... And the results were... So I'm building the anticipation here, Steve. I'm building the anticipation. Castleford Panthers, 16. Brighouse Rangers, 6. Queensbury, 6. Upton, 22. Great win, that, for Upton. We love Upton now, because now we know where it is. <laughs> uh, and then we, 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 we know that we were... We, we got a really good impression, didn't we, off Doddeth Miners. We always like giving them a good mention. Yeah. Uh, they defeated the Birkenshaw Blue Dogs by 20 points to four. And then if I look at the results from the Shield, then uh, it was 
Hemsworth Dragons. We know where Hemsworth is. Mm. Uh, 16. Dewsbury Moor, 24. Oh, that's a close result. Charleston it? Rovers, 24. Newsom Panthers, A, 0. Or Charleston Rovers Academy, 24, I should yeah. say. Newsom Panthers, A. East Hull, 64. Oddsall Sedberg, 0. This sounds like it was a cracker as well, to be honest. Batley, ARLFC, 16. Garforth Tigers, 18. And then Underbank Rangers, 6. Alton Raiders, 56. Mm. Um, and then I, I seem to have lost my result. <laughs> There's there a couple more there. Well, I've got Sherburne Tigers, 36. And Durham Valley Bulldogs, 20. Uh, Lindley St. Joseph's, uh, 8. York St. John's Barbarians, 26. And uh, I think that is it, actually. Uh, so... Yeah, it is. I'm going to have a quick look at what we've got fixture-wise coming up in the Yorkshire Men's League this coming weekend. Uh, In the Premier Division, yes, league games get underway uh, as the season makes a great start. So Doncaster Toll Bar, they're hosting Newson Panthers. Fryston Warriors travel over to Stanley Rangers. Almondry Spartans were due to play against Westgate Common, but that has been postponed. Uh, There's no fault on that. So uh, that one might take place a little bit later in the season. King Cross Park, they're at home to Keithley Albion. If we look at what's happening in Division 1 this coming weekend, it's Osset Trinity Tigers at home to Cutsite Raiders. It's Shalston Rovers travelling over to Hunslet ARLFC. Murfield are also on the road this weekend. They're moving over to Bradford Dudley Hill. Meanwhile, Wibsey Warriors there at Siddle Academy. And then uh, running through the rest of the divisions. Division 2, that sees uh, Queensbury up against Brighouse Rangers. Emily Moore Cougars, they host the Birkinshaw Blue Dogs. Illingworth, they're at home to Mould Green. Uh, Castleford Panthers, they're hosting Seacroft Sharks. And then if we look into Division 3... So Division 3 sees Bramley Buffaloes at home against the New Earswick All Blacks. York Acorn up against Upton. Uh, a combined Elland and Greatland All-Rounders. Mm. So they've come together at, at Open Age for this season. Uh, they're up against Doddeth Miners. A uh, little bit of an unusual one, that, isn't yeah, it? Because yeah. you know, they're, they're two traditional teams, really. Um, but obviously we know that that has happened in the past, don't we? You know, it happened uh, with... Burtonwood, yeah, and uh, Clockface, didn't it? Yeah, in in Northwest Men's uh, fixtures from Division Four: West Craven Warriors up against Alton Raiders, Underbank Rangers against Newson Panthers. A. Uh, meanwhile, Ghoul Vikings they travel over to the Sherburne Burrs, uh, and you've been more there away at York Barbarians, and then uh, again running through these divisions. I do love the fact that. We've got extended divisions, haven't we, in Yorkshire men's? It's absolutely lords. Crigleston, All Blacks. So these are Division Four fixtures. Division Five, five fixtures, yeah. by the way. Yeah, Crigleston, All Blacks. They're hosting the Durham Valley Bulldogs. The Farnley Falcons are at home to Lindley St Joseph's, and then your action from uh, Division Six. Six. That sees Geisley Rangers at home to the Rycroft Hammers. Keithley Albion Academy, they're up against King Cross Park Academy. Charleston Rovers Academy, they're up against the Moortown Mambas. And the Burton, Burtonshire Blue Dogs Academy play the Hem, Hemsworth Dragons. I know, you know something. If you're involved with Moortown Mambas mm. or the Hemsworth Dragons, we want to hear from you. Yeah, yeah, we definitely want to hear more about your clubs. Certainly more town members, because that just, uh, we want to know how, why, where and when, don't we, about them. It's uh, it's really, really good, that. So, yeah, so th- those are your fixtures this week. Have I missed anybody out, Steve? Uh, well, there's the, the uh, whole division. Okay. Uh, we've got Cottingham Tigers, they will be up against uh, Might and Warriors. Eastall, they welcome Westall. Oh, oh, there's a clash there. Just a bit. Yeah. Uh, Skirley, uh will they take on uh, Scunthorpe Steel Sharks? And in the NCL Alliance, Bentley will take on West Bowling Academy. Eastmoor Dragons will take on Shawcross Sharks. Hemsworth will play Stanningley. 
and Normington Knights, well, they'll be up against Milford. Do you know what? I, I, the Eastall Westall, it's it, funny that uh, coming up because uh, I was watching a piece on YouTube uh, about uh, Mikey Lewis, who plays for Ulkia. And from what I can gather, he was a, a player for Westall. Yeah, he's a Westall. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, we, we, and yet he's ended up representing. East, exactly. Yeah, the east yeah. side of the city, hasn't he? You know, and well, going on the Rovers shirt. There was him, and uh, I think it was one of the Lippen brothers, uh, Davy, I think. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, and they were being interviewed, and it was at the the Westall Club, uh, and it was really interesting. So if you've uh, get onto uh, uh, YouTube and have a look for that, because uh, certainly from a community point of view, it makes it really interesting and on understanding how how these players, a, have gone on to do it professionally, and b. I've moved the other side of the the city, as it were. There was, um, uh, it's, it, it gives a lovely mention in that as well to Fiona, who I obviously know from the Lions well, yeah, uh, yeah. program. So uh, Fiona and a, a partner have been involved at West Hull for many years. You know, um, I don't want to say stalwarts, but they have been there for ages and ages and ages, and they've seen a lot of these kids that yeah. have gone on playing in the pro ranks um, and she was made up that you know they give a good mention to, to, to Westall she said that when the video crew was there uh, she made them all cups of tea and everything like that and uh, apparently Mikey spends a lot of his time still yeah. back at, at, at Westall so he's never forgotten his roots yeah. um, and, and when last time I spoke to her she showed me um, she showed me a video of Mikey Lewis's uh, team I think they were at that stage under 13s yeah. and they just won a match and they did like a celebratory hacker yeah. after the game and it was like made up on the spot yeah. and it yeah. was something like uh, uh, meat pie and gravy, yeah. meat pie and gravy, <laughs> meat pie and gravy with peas <laughs> and, that, that, and they were doing it to like the hacker and I just, I just love that little video, you know, so, um, but, but yeah. I've seen that video. I yeah. say, you know, even the the guys that are becoming the superstars of our sport, mm. and, it, and like, he is. Let, let's he be is. honest, you know, I think most teams would look at Mikey Lewis oh, and yeah. think, oh, "Wow, what a player! Yeah, what a player!" And I know IMG. Well, not just IMG. If you, if you remember, uh, Eddie Earns was being questioned. Uh, uh, what was last year? I'll begin the last year, maybe before IMG. Yes. About you know what would he do? You know if he took over, and he basically said, "Well, I can't name any of his stars," and and he's probably right in that respect. But for me, Mikey Lewis should be put front and centre as a, a you know sort of because John Wilkin keeps uh, ripping into him. Oh, all. that's why we've no stars because of John Wilkin. Uh, uh, but, the, the, <laughs> but, but, but but you know uh, I, I jest, you, of course. Yeah, but, but you get the, the, the likes of Mikey Lewis and and his back story that yes. goes with it uh, and the exciting rugby that he plays and that is that swagger that he carries you know and that for me is 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 visually uh, uh, it, it's you know what when you go to watch a, a rugby game you want to watch that type of, type of thing you want to watch things that are off the cuff that you you're want not to see really flair expecting players don't yeah, you yeah, you do yeah. and you know we we have got flair players yeah. i mean we we were at the national conference league game oh, the weekend yeah. weren't yeah. we which we'll tell you a little bit more about in a bit but between um lee east and east leeds oh. And there was a couple of fellow players involved there and, uh, you know, a guy that's been at that very top level who I think he's still got the class to play at oh, that level, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, I, I kind of like, I kind of agree with the Hearns a little bit there, you know, on the fact that we, we do need to make more of these. But yeah. also, as you've mentioned, the backstory is important. Mm. The fact that they're not just from Hull KR. Mm. The from West Hull, he's come through. He's played all. If it wasn't for what happened at West Hull, if it wasn't for people like Fiona, if it wasn't for people like the coaches that helped bring him through, and his family, where would he be in rugby? Yeah, because he's got his family's youngest. The mum and dad are not that old. No, no, no. Because yeah, well, I'm watching that video and his dad was doing talking. Like, I'm thinking, is that his dad or is that his brother, older brother? <laughs> Because he ain't that old, but but I'm really enthused about him and you know what he's doing. And and yes. right, rightly so too, rightly so. Uh, so fa- it was, fa- yeah, I agree. I think that's a, that was a fantastic video, mm. by the way. Uh, right. So over the last weekend, I was involved with the Lions squad. So um, first of all, the um, under 17s getting together for the very first time on the Saturday, uh, and and that was interesting. There's mm. some 
you know, a good good mix of um, highly skilled players actually this time round in the under 17s. I'm looking forward to seeing how they come together as a as a playing group. Um, there's obviously a couple of guys there that are very influential for the clubs that they play for. Yeah. Um, and I'm just interested to sort of see how they fit into the system that the coaches are trying to implement and, um, you know, sort of some of the moves that they're looking to put on, which are a little bit different, shall yeah. we say, some of the shapes that they're, yeah. they're starting to run, certainly from at the club level. Um, and it was interesting as well seeing some of the one-on-one coaching yeah. that was also being done by, uh, by Stuart Simmons and by Martin Ellis as well. Uh, it's going to be a busy next few weeks for Martin because he's uh, heading up the under-16 squad for this season as well. Yeah, I saw him on uh, on Twitter on about that as well. That That's just been announced. Mm-hmm. So again, that's something else which I, I'll bring you up to speed with. But I want to move on to the open age lines because, um, you know, after the hard rigours of the Saturday and, <laughs> you know, some really tough games that we'll again bring you up to speed with... Um, there was 26 players which met up ahead of uh, ahead of training uh, and they went at it for a good hour and a half at Pilks on, on Sunday morning. After that session, I caught up with head coach Paul Couch and this is what we discussed. Well, Paul, we're here. Um, we're, we're done the, uh, the second session, I think it is now, isn't it? Second or third session, as far as the England Community Lions Open Age squad is concerned. Uh, how do you feel that the squad is coming together? Yeah, to say it's the only second session we've had, you can see for yourself that it's been uh, the bonded really well. Um, obviously, with a, with a good group of players who will play um, a, a good level week in, week out. So, um, yeah, I'm really pleased with how we're, how we're shaping up and to say it's the only second session um, I think there's a lot of good things to come There's some real quality amongst the group isn't there? Yeah and so there should be um, uh, we're down to a 26 man squad um, uh, obviously it's got to be cut this has got to be cut to 22 so uh, it's going to be tough to, to cut them four players so uh, everybody's got to be on the ball every session really uh, And it's, it's one of those where it, that, that's literally it so as soon as you sound your whistle everybody's ready to go aren't they yeah and you can see today that they have been um, they've, they, they are switched on It's and I do understand that a lot of them have played yesterday and it's it's an early morning start for them but uh, they are switched on and they're, they're an high quality bunch it's showing, it's, they're showing the commitment levels as well aren't they to the programme yeah as, along with staff as well staff are obviously showing the commitment as well but they have a good reward if they get picked so um, that three week in, in Perth is, um, is some trip and um, something that all these players are keen to go on but they've got to work hard for the clubs as well as for um, the Lions as well I've got to ask you as well Paul because um, obviously in your role you go out now watching the games don't you so you've been to some high quality games already this season haven't you yeah I've probably picked up more games than you have actually <laughs> right? but uh, yeah there's some that um, I, I, I try to watch at least one different team a week, and uh, yeah, there's some there's some really good quality players out there. There's some players that are out there as well that are playing well for the clubs, and we we, keep, we are keeping an eye on them. But um, these lads have got the first opportunity um, to to impress, but they've got to be playing well for the clubs and training well for the clubs as well. And what I like as well is that obviously we're at that time here where the other age groups are starting to come into play, etc., etc., aren't they? So it's one of those where you've been at various training sessions yourself haven't you? Yeah I think it's important that um, the same standard is without and like you've just said I was, I was at the 17 and 19 session and um, just to watch the session and hopefully some of them 19s are going to step up to 23s at some point uh, and obviously with the 17s can step up to the 19 so I think it's important that um, everybody has the same mentality that everybody has the same passion to play for the Lions uh, I wanted to ask you from a separate note as well because obviously like we were talking about you go to some of these other games uh, you was at a cracker yesterday weren't you? Yeah, Wathbrow and, um, and, and Umslet uh, really good game um, uh, I think it was seven, five, eight, eight players who have trained this morning who, were, who played in that game and, and every one of them stood up in the game it's, um, it's good to watch that high standard week in week out but it's making my job harder and harder to cut this squad um, I'm, I'm, what did you make of the game? Uh, yeah, I thought I thought I thought Unslet in the second half dominated um, dominated Wathbrow a little bit. They kept they kept the they kept the ball off them, which 
when you've got players like Dean and Fran in the halfbacks, you, you need to keep the ball. You need, you need to keep the ball. You need to keep the ball off them. So I thought Unslet did that well, and, and, and players like both McShane's who were, who were who were outstanding yesterday. So that when they've got the ball in their hand, then they're very dangerous players. Rugby League's secret weapon, Green Cooling, scores with the 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. You could almost say that the not-so-secret weapon of the Hunslet side are the two McShanes that you mentioned there, <laughs> aren't they? You know. um, but great to hear from Paul there. And, and interesting to note that he is getting out and about mm. and um, you know being... Uh, full part of seeing everything that's going on in the the lion structure, which you know both well, I think. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and that's important, isn't it? Because it's giving everybody eye, eyes on everybody who's uh, you know sort of in that squad, uh, and sort of just making sure that you know you got to keep your standard up and and and, uh, and keep at it, as it were. So, um, talking about squads. There is another squad that has been announced this week. Well, to be fair, there's been two squads that have been announced today, and I'll explain a little bit more about this. So the uh, squad that will go on to play against the home nations this week, this year at under-16s level, it features Jaden Tyson from Egremont Rangers, Travis Jack Moss from Castleford Panthers, Saul Campbell from Gateshead Storm, Archie Starr from Kipax Welfare, Ellis Holiday from Hensingham, Bobby Dickinson from Hensingham, Preston Burgess from Kipax Welfare, you've got Joseph Higgins Meadows from Lee Miners, Dylan Morris from Egremont Rangers, Colby Harmer from Ulton Raiders, Lewis Daniels from Goulburn Parkside, Mason Bowes from Hunslet, Reese Galvin from Lee Miners, Declan Rigby from Halton Farmouth Hornets, Jack Barker from Millham, Bradley McDonough from Lee Miners, Noel Gardner Lewis from Lee East, Seb Jeffers comes into this squad from Shawcross Sharks. Also making this squad is Junior Redmond from Normanton Knights, uh, and finishing off is Josh Duran from Hensingham. Um, and I've got to say, there's a real nice mix there, isn't there? There's a real nice mix, but if Jack Barker and Bobby Dickinson, you know, when you look at that. That's probably the two names that stand out because all the others just shows you the changing names over the years, doesn't it, Parker? With the likes of Travis Jack, yeah, Colby, uh, Jaden, yeah, um, Preston Junior. uh, But that's great to see, isn't it? Because obviously, all these kids uh, are are, are really stalwarts of their clubs. And looking at some of the clubs as well, Parker, uh, well, Kipax Welfare Juniors, uh, Gateshead Storm, yeah, uh, you know, they're they're not the. one that we regularly speak about it for the amount of clubs that we we, we cover. I, and I do love that, you mm. know, about we we get to we get to mention some of the some of the work that gets done because because let's be honest, you know, they'll have been cheering today when they opened up the uh, the post, wouldn't they? You know, oh and, yeah, and and found out that lads representing their clubs. Well, well that's it, isn't it? On England I'll, shirts I'll, this year, and we say it time and time again. It it from a community point of view, it it's about the player about the families and obviously about the club that you know where they've come through and it's all those people who they will be representing uh, and that is fantastic for for those clubs that are not you know regularly in the mix as it were so i mean like um i did mention that these are the guys that are going to be moving forward going to be pulling on england shirts this year uh, as part of the squad that will take on the likes of uh you know wales and scotland um now, there's also a regional under-16 squad mm-hmm. that has been announced. So you may be thinking, well, what's all that about? Uh, and this regional squad, they are named... Um, these are other guys that also impressed during the trials. Yeah. Uh, and it's expanding the amount of players that are getting representation. So these guys, the, these will play against a regional French select over a two-game series a little bit later on in the season. So it's not a full French side, but having seen the lineup that travelled over last time, yes, yeah. um, these guys were very good. So I think it was like the South West or the South uh, French team which came over. So these regional guys, and, and bear in mind as well that I spoke to uh, Tom Farron, the other week for the under nineteen, yeah, yeah. and I said about what's your what's been your journey, and he said he got picked in one of these regional squads first mm. of all. So, like 
some of these lads initially must have been thinking, oh, I've not got picked in the main England squad. But you're still in the picture. Shop window, aren't they? You're in the shop yeah, window. Yeah. You do well. Mm. You go forward mm. for the selections next year at under 17s level. Yeah. You put yourself in the shop window again for potentially representing England in a future, uh, in a future European Championships. Yeah. <laughs> There's all those opportunities now in the park, come, aren't they? You yeah. look at what comes. Hopefully, yeah. there'll yeah. be you know. C- 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 community clubs knocking on the door hopefully there's professional clubs knocking on mm. the door as well to be fair because I mean you know we do love to to also give you stories and you know who knows you could be the next Mikey Lewis when you're in this squad that's right that's right you yeah. know so uh, making the regional under 16 squad at Aidan Hampson from Ashton Burrs Alex Richardson from Latchford Giants Ashton Quigley from Hensingham Daniel Horton from uh, Holford Hol- Holford Holford <laughs> From Holford's, right? Okay, Holford's. <laughs> yeah, just that his tyres changed. Dan- Daniel Harton from Halton at Farmworth Harness. I knew what I wanted to say. Yeah. I just couldn't say it. My brain's not working. That's why. Don't no no comments about it. Rarely working, Steve. <laughs> comments uh, below. <laughs> George Lees comes into this squad from Hemsworth Dragons. Then you have Jack Jackson from Witness Moorfield Tigers, mm. James Hodgkiss from Wollstone Rovers Goldside, Leon Walker from Blackbrook, Ethan Boylan from Lee Miners, Max Knight from Heweth, Niall Maudsley from Dalton, Noah Wilde from Rochdale Mayfield, Oliver Banks from Wigan St. Pat's, Preston Ward from Elmbridge Eagles. Now that is fantastic Excellent, that he's gone yeah. in this squad. Uh, Preston Malloy also comes into this squad from Hensingham. Sam Grace Holding from Oral St. James. Thomas Baumer from Goulburn Parkside. William Nabosny from Alton Raiders. Callum Turner comes into this squad from Goulburn Parkside. And Lewis Ward from Kipax Welfare. So again, Really interesting that we've yeah. got uh, a number of different clubs that are represented there. I made up for Elmbridge Eagles, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, with the work that they do in the south. I, I, I totally agree with you because that's important that as well, Parky. That uh, you know, it's not just uh, uh, up here, as it as it were. Yeah, uh, you, cu- couple of players from Golden Parkside though, mm-hmm. as well in yeah. that in that squad. So that bears fruit of what's been happening there. And nice to mention another Witness side as well, the Witness Moorfield yeah. Tigers. The other thing is, Parky, it'd be great, and I'm, I'm sure they will be wanting to do this, that these guys, as as they do get older, you know, continue to represent that club. So, yes. the, you know, the, the, those open-age sides eventually will, will bear fruits uh, of, of these players as well. Uh, so, yeah, fantastic. Mm. I'm glad that we get to chat about, you know, those, those, those young fellas mm. as well. So, over coming weeks... Um, the first of all, it's going to be the uh, under 16 squad which will be getting together, um, and then the regional squad will come into into the role as well, yeah. and and also start training together as well. So it's an exciting time. Um, I, I love this time of year to be honest, because especially at that age group, <laughs> obviously the the coaching staff have been through hours of videotape mm. you know from what was taken during the, the the trials where the last 60 players got themselves selected 60 players yeah so they had like you know three teams of 20 I think yeah, yeah. which all played against each other on the on the final yeah you know the final trials yeah I like I like seeing those because obviously you've got it, it's new to the guys uh, and some of the fitting in with, with blokes who if they know, usually they know from playing against them yeah, rather than with them. quite a lot of the time, they mix them up. So exactly, you might not even yeah, them that's right, yeah. And, and that's important, like we spoke about in the past, because if you can get somebody who can, you know, uh, one or two players who you can see that, you know, they fit into this type of structure and way of playing, you know, sort of straight away. And then, obviously, if they've got a they're good off-field, off uh, you know, sort of attitude... Because again, we spoke about that being very important, and uh, that's that's great to see. The the other side of that as well is that you also see how lads communicate with each other, don't you? you yeah. Know, from an early age, and I've always said, you know, part of the Lions program, it's not just about the rugby; it's about bringing people on and improving people's skills. This is a, a part of it, uh, representing the, the, the media side, if you like, of the Lions programme. Yeah. 
I'm always happy to, to play a little bit of a part in this and to chat to people and try and get them used to seeing this massive microphone, which, you know, yeah. the, 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 and I, I've joked, I've said it before, the chances are, if I get that big microphone out, they're not going to be interviewed by a bigger one until they appear on Sky. Sky Sports, yeah. You know, so so it is. It is. It is one of those, really, isn't it? You know, and and it's always interesting because, particularly this age group, I know nothing about the players. Yeah, yeah. And yet you learn it, and you're thinking, oh, you did that, and then you, you see some of them hopefully go the way through the age yeah. groups, and, and, and that's it. That's that's going to be the exciting bit, isn't it? Over the next year, next year, you're seeing how, how they develop and move on, whether it be community wise or whether it be moving up, you know, within the the, the ranks of their own club. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be others that will, because there won't be room for them, will move to other clubs. I mean, because we see that where you get, you know, sort of uh, open age sides, certainly, which are, uh, you know, sort of at the end of the day, you know, trying to shift some of the people who are in there, mm. you know, it, the, 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 it's going to be difficult. But that doesn't mean to say that there aren't other teams that they can't, can't go and play for. Definitely, definitely. So now we're going to move on to the National Conference League and all the action got underway last Friday, Steve. You know, this was a, a big Premier Division clash between York Acorn. They travelled over to Lock Lane and it was the visitors that won the game by 26 points to 18. Uh, I, I know Lock Lane have been having a little bit of a tough start to the season um, and uh, York Acorn, they've really got Ben Teng. You remember seeing him. We both saw him and were impressed with him, weren't w- we? W- winger. Winger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He scored two tries for, right, for yeah. York Acorn. All the try scorers on the night were Parker, Potter and Prescott and Chilton kicking three goals. Yes, you can't have a York Acorn side kicking goals it's unless it's Ant, can you? He's yeah, a good, good player, player. at Chilton. Uh, Lot Lane, they responded with tries from Cranswick, Siddons and Pick. Butler kicking three goals. Uh, but uh, that's a good win, that, on the road for York Acorn. Then switching to Saturday, also from the Premier Division, Egremont Rangers 24, West Bowling 16. So a good home win for Egremont Rangers. Uh, a couple of guys who are hoping to feature for the England Community Lions Open Age squad when it does finally get announced for going down uh, down to Australia. Mm. Uh, Horner scoring a try, Krellin scoring two, McNee and Conway with the other try scorers with Matt Buescher kicking two goals. For West Bowling, they had try scorers from Coe, Camden and Cockshot. So Kean Cockshot was a guy that uh, I'm really pleased to see his name on a, a first team sheet, by the way, uh, because I remember speaking to him a couple of years ago when he was hoping to get the nod to represent England Community Lions in Italy yeah. at the last European Championships and he didn't make the final squad. Um, so great to see that it's not put him off. He's back out there. He's doing his thing. He's scoring tries. Uh, Co also kicked two goals as well, but it wasn't enough for West Bowling. Uh, you heard uh, Paul Couch talk a little bit about this game earlier, but Hunslet 38, Wathbro Hornets 12. Big win this for Hunslet. Uh, impressive performance from Cork, who scored two tries. McClelland got in on the score sheet. Jordan Gale, Ben Shulver, Webster and Jack McShane scoring tries. Jordan Gale kicking five goals. For the Hornets, Tomlinson and Holgate went in. Walker Taylor kicking two goals. Um, and it was only 14-12 this one at half time. So a powerful second half from Hunslet. Um, then... Uh, we have Kells 6, Rochdale Mayfield 6. And before I tell you any more about this game, I want to go to our next and final interview of the evening. We've got Dom Weir from Kells. Dom, I wanted to have a chat with you because you're a bit of a, the draw specialist this year. Is it four games, two draws? I see, that's correct, mate. Yeah, last two games, draws at home against Rochdale and uh, Hunslet. Uh, two good results for us. The weather played a bit of a part, but yeah, two good games, I think. I was going to say, you know, because I mean, there's the, obviously the, the pit field is mythical. The stories that have been written about it up and down rugby league world, didn't they? You know, to be honest, um, and it can play a real a real impact, can't it? Yeah, it can, and it can have uh, an effect on the opposing team. I think it has the last couple of games. Um, 
but yeah, if you see the weather forecast, normally times it by two or three on the pit field, it's always going to be worse than what it says. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I want to ask you what those type of games are like playing in, you know, because uh, arguably, you know, two very, very low scoring games that you've been involved in draws. Yeah. Um, are they the best sort of games to play in, or, or would you prefer it to be a little bit more open? Yeah, personally, as a halfback, I prefer it in summer. <laughs> but yeah, it's it a battle of attrition with our forwards, but we play the pitch really well, I think, well, at times. Um, and yeah, our lads know how to dig in and just know how to play the condition pretty well. As I say, we're all local lads, so we've all grew up on that pitch, so it, it does come in our favour a, bit, a lot when, when the weather's certainly like that. You seem as well over this last couple of years since you've been back in the Prem um, to have really taken to it like a duck to water. Yeah, I'd say we've, we've had a couple of goals had it before, um, probably learned a few lessons, but we've had a good group of young lads that have come through as well that's really pushed on. Um, so I'd say half our team's under... 22, but they're all really keen and enjoying it, so pushing on a few of us, all the lads, so it's really helped the, the, the full team. It's been a lot of the Cumbrian teams have gone that way, haven't they, where there's a lot more younger players that are involved these days? Yeah, it certainly is. I think uh, they've set up, in, especially in West Cumbria, ourselves, Egmont, Wathbrow, um, for all being so close knit and how well we actually do, and all in the Prem and all doing pretty well this year. To, it's a big uh, testament to the local Cumbrian League. I suppose it's pretty, it's pretty good as well because it cuts down your mileage, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, we, I think we've already travelled away once this year with our first game being cancelled, so yeah, it makes a bit different. I think when we were first in the Prem, we had four full trips, so yeah, it's time to come to Cumbria for a change. Oh, I remember those days because there was like East Hull, Skirl, uh, West Hull, Mighton, like, yeah. Mighton as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, th- th- those were the days. Those you know, I mean, days, don't yeah. don't <laughs> don't get me wrong. I mean, you still do more travelling than your average person, don't you? I oh, yeah, the games coming up now. In our fixture list, so yeah, but a lot of the boys are used to the travel, and uh, yeah, we have we have a good time on the bus back, so it makes it worth it. A uh, little bit of a double-edged question, this one. So, how would you rate Kel's start to the season as a team, and then your own start personally? Um, I think Kel's if put us in this position at the start of the year, we probably uh, we probably agree to it, but I think we've left a couple of points last couple of weeks, but. I'd say they've both been close draws, so we could have, could have, could have gone either way, so happy with that. Um, personally, I think I've started pretty solid, as I say, more of a summer weather type of player, so I'm getting behind a, a good kicking game. Um, but yeah, so pretty solid from, from both aspects. I can imagine it's a half back. Exactly than I want to do, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, how have you found the Lions experience so far? Yeah, being great, mate. As I touched on there, uh, lads have really bonded uh, really well. Um, as I say, it feels like we've been together for a few years, not just a couple of training sessions, and everyone's really bought into it's it. It's a cracking group, you know, and everybody seems to get on, which is, is a real bonus, isn't it? Yeah, as I say, the crack's great, and as I say, everyone's digging in the training. Uh, obviously, a couple of lads have been on tour before and played with each other before but you're playing against the lads week in week out so you get to know them pretty well as well Has that little bit of you know have you picked anything up in particular out of people that's been in other places and stuff Um yeah, I suppose it's probably just how different styles of people play different uh, everyone pretty much plays a similar way but how, the, how people want to come onto the ball how, how they talk in defence and stuff and different defensive styles yeah, so it, it's been a good mix as I say it's quite a spread out uh, group as well we've got right across the NCL so yeah it's been a good mix I know uh, Paul's mentioned that intensity is going to ramp up for the next session but I mean I was pretty impressed with some of the skills in this session that we've just witnessed to be yeah, fair yeah it's I thought that last two have been pretty intense definitely uh, <laughs> after playing in uh, two draws as well so yeah um, be interesting to see what happens on the fifth <laughs> um, I look forward to seeing how you go who have you got next from Kale's point of view uh, we're at Wathbrow away next week so local derby oh, bit of a derby yeah. match then bit of a grudge match so with some more, of these boys yeah yes, certainly so hopefully more than a draw there <laughs> <laughs> uh, best of luck I'll no doubt catch up with you a little bit later no on, worries. thank you very much cheers mate Every tackle, every, every try, tackle, every, every scrum, scrum, every scrum, green cooling is green proud, to be, is proud to be part of the community rugby league family. the community rugby league family. Hey, I tell you what, that was fantastic. I don't know what you did with those sound effects. There. <laughs> is, there, is there an echo in here? In here? In here? In here? <laughs> There's something going on in me here. In me here? In me here? Um, but yes, that was Don. We are great to hear Good that. from him. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I love the chance of getting the amongst the mix with the squad, um, but also reflecting the on the second draw in succession. As I mentioned, oh. he's becoming a bit of a draw specialist. Kells have drawn two of the first four games in the Premier Division this year. The latest result: a six-all draw with Rochdale Mayfield Chambers scoring Kells only try we are kicking that all important goal to level matters that was after Hargreave scored for Mayfield and Parr kicked them into a 6-0 advantage at half time there was a battle galore at Siddle Siddle 18 Hewitt 10 
Ackroyd, McCallum and Milnes getting over for tries. Hosty kicking three goals. Meanwhile for Hewitt, Richmond and Sturdy going over the line with Allen kicking a goal. Uh, he was pleased actually, was uh, McCallum. So if you remember, I spoke to him after the last uh, Lions training session. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And I was saying about him not scoring a try this yeah. season, you know, all the other players overtaking him, and he was a bit worried. Yeah. He, he came up to me at the start of training, you know, just as they were starting to warm up. And he yeah. goes, hey, Dave, Dave, I scored. I scored yesterday. <laughs> I scored yesterday. <laughs> so I said I'd give him a mention. So uh, <laughs> great to see that. There was a, a massive result as well for West Hull. West Hull 56, Thato Heath Crusaders 14. A hat-trick of tries for Wood, two for Watts, eight goals from Wilson included in that one. Uh, for the Crusaders, Foster, Huff and Halsall going in for tries, but they were distinctly second best, trailing 26 points to four at half time, and things didn't really get much better in the second half. In Division 1, it was Crossfield 16, Waterhead 24, so Bradish, Steele, Stanway and Lomax scoring the tries for Crossfields. Ever since you said they had decent kickers, they've hardly kicked a goal, to be honest. That's eh? uh, terrible, that, isn't it? Uh, just uh, give them the kiss of death. It's a good job that Walter had a goal kicker, so Brennan added four. Perk scoring a try, Owen scoring two, Robinson getting the other try there. They actually trailed by eight points to six at half time as well. So fair play to Waterhead getting the job done in Warrington. Uh, there was no result between Holdockers and Intros Bridge. It was a game that was postponed due to an unfit pitch. Meanwhile, Lee Miners Rangers, uh, they defeated the other Miners, Clockface Miners, 56 points to 18. A couple of tries from Williamson. Three tries for Kenyon for Lee Miners Rangers. Eight goals from Hoyles. Uh, and then for Clock, there was a hat-trick in vain from Winger Jones. Uh, Gerrity kicking just one goal. And we know through being in Lee ourselves, it was difficult afternoon oh, for kicking, it wasn't was, it? It was very bad. Well, we said uh, every time there was a goal kick, we was it, it, it was a, it was a nightmare. I mean, even, even underneath the sticks, you were holding your yeah, breath. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, fair play to Hoyles for kicking eight of them. I mean, that's that's no easy feat, is yeah, it? Yeah, that's very good. Uh, Lee Miners were leading twenty-eight ten at half time in that one. Uh, Jewsbury Moor are still unbeaten, so they have taken the division by storm. Yeah, obviously, it's getting yeah. promoted. Uh, this time, it was win up at Skirler by 22 points to 20 they actually trailed by 20 points to 6 at half time as well they would used be more so what a second half comeback there Skirler's tries coming through Morrow Webster and Danby Gilby kicking 4 goals meanwhile for the Maroons Martland Butterfield and Clarkson and Sam going over for tries Walker kicking the all important three goals in the end. Uh, there was a real high scoring clash between Stanningley and Wollstone. So Stanningley 40, Wollstone Rovers 34. So Stanley, Atlinson and Parker, Mallinson kicking six goals. Uh, meanwhile, we've been building up Harry Files for the last few weeks, haven't we? Yeah. Brother Adam's got That's a, right, yeah. a hat trick of his own at the weekend. Fernley, Roberts and Brown also going in. Lawton kicking five goals. I've got to say, what a comeback from I Wilson in that second that, half, yeah. though. It was almost like a reversal. So at half-time, Stanley led by 34 points to six. six. Yeah, You've no right to come back from 34 or no. six down, have you, to make it so close. They just the give themselves a touch too much to do, though, didn't they, Wilson? I mean, they've got to take a lot away from it from you know, for, for trying to that you get, get that comeback, I must admit. Uh, Wigan St. Pats have continued their good start to the season with an 18-10 win against Alton Raiders. O'Donnell, the star there, with a try and three goals. Um, and in Division 2, Jewsby Celtic 42, Saddleworth Rangers 20. Busy afternoon, this one. Cummins scoring a hat-trick for Celtic. He had a busy afternoon as well. He also kicked three goals. Uh, and Falston's continued lacing up the boots. He added a further two goals. Meanwhile, for, for Rangers, Neild, Ogden, Molden and Mills going over for tries. Goal split between Kenworthy and Charles. This one looked like a right cracking first half. Mm. Hardly anything between the sides. But Jewsby Celtic getting away from their visitors in the second half. There was a good win on the road for Shawcross Sharks up at Millam. Uh, they won by 28 points to 14. Two tries from Woods in that one. Uh, four 
goals from the boot of your favourite Division 2 player, Tomlinson. Yeah, I like him. I must admit. And I'll tell you what, they're doing well, Shawcross. We were on about, on about that about uh, Dewsbury Mill Maroons in Division 1. Uh, Shawcross uh, and Manure in that at the moment in it's Division like, 2. It's like a right Dewsbury revival, isn't mm. it? What's going on at the moment when you look at how, how those two results and then Thornhills have, have kind of like took a, an upturn over, over recent weeks. Um, Normanton Knights 31, Ellenborough Rangers 20. Uh, so Jacob Crossland kicking five goals in that one but it was Joe Crossland who was the hero he scored uh, a try and also kicked an all important drop goal in that one for Rangers there was a couple of tries for Robinson Wilson and Gillespie also scoring their tries with Occasini kicking two goals uh, and a big well done to Pilkington Rex they defeated Might and Warriors 44 points to 24 a certain Kieran Napper has returned to the club uh, and straight away found himself on the score sheet grabbing a try and kicking three goals. Connick also chipping in with uh, three goals as well. O'Connell scoring a couple of tries. Morris going in for a couple. I wonder whether they were off that little hook ball near the play the ball. Um, That's an important win for them, that though. But I, it's I a huge we me- win. We mentioned that last week. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, and you're looking there now that... Uh, you know, they're not not letting those those middle ones, you know, middle teams getting away from. Them, that now they can uh, hopefully can string a couple of wins back to back. Look like we'll a great second go. half as well, to be honest. Yeah, they, it was only sixteen twelve at yeah. half time. So you know, fair play, fair play. Uh, Thornhill Trojans they went down very narrowly at home to Oldham St Anne's by twelve points to ten. Gibson going in for a t- one of the two tries and kicking the goal for the Trojans. Uh, for the Saints, Worrell and Etchells going over for tries with Pogson kicking those all-important two goals. A massive win for Wigan St. Jude's, who defeated Barrow Island by 62 points to 12. There was a hat-trick for Turner, two tries for Brady, two tries for Davis. Meanwhile, Cassidy and Parkinson also got on the try-scoring charts as well. Cassidy kicking nine goals. Fair play, given those conditions, as we know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the I- island, it was Stockdale and Rosconi who went in for tries. Uh, Sam Jones kicking a couple of goals, but they were well out of the contest, trailing 26-6 at half-time. And into Division 3, Beverly 12, Hensingham 22. They've really got their act together, Hensingham, this mm. season, from the look of these early results in the year. Uh, so Dalton scoring a couple of tries. Your favourite Division 3 player, Wetherill, going in yeah. for a try, kicking a goal as well. Um, and uh, then Driglington had a massive result against Seaton Rangers, huge, winning by 54 points to six. Two tries each for Sheldon and Thornton. Uh, jo- Sanderson kicking seven goals, um, a try from Brian and a goal from Brian, just breaking things up for Seaton Rangers, but they were well out of that one. And then another big result for Milford. So Milford 54, Featherstone Lions 4. We were hoping that after hearing about the results at um, Crossfields last week in the Barla National Cup, mm. that this might see an upturn for Featherstone Lions, but they found themselves overwhelmed. So Tasker scoring a couple of tries in that one. Newbolt kicking seven goals. Uh, impressive victory that for Milford. And then there was the game that we were at. So this was Lee East up against East Leeds. Uh, I tell you what, I loved being at this game. A, because it weren't that far away from home. <laughs> you, could, you could walk it from your house. Nearly, nearly. <laughs> um, B, it was great seeing some of the guys that I, I've, I still know pretty well that are involved down mm. at, at Lee East and catching up with a few people. Um, and also I got to have a good chat with uh, Rob Roberts. Mm. Um, so we'll we'll bring you that in just a few minutes. But let's get to the action. Here's the best of the match. But oh, it's been picked it's up by Cam Clark. It's an interception. You're right there, Steve. And he's fed it oh, out to the left-hand support. side. Here is Prescott. Prescott opening those legs. He's going to go 40 metres, run it all the oh, way to yeah. the line. Brilliant support play from Kieran Prescott. And I've got to say that they snaffled up that opportunity perfectly. Did Lee East, uh, Cam Clark getting amongst them. We're having, uh, we're having technical issues. There was a bit of a technical issue with the East Leeds attack then, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, uh, on, uh, just on four minutes there first try uh, took the opportunity they're parking that's a uh, that's the thing to do 
nice little link up play looking to burst their way down the ground I think that's Mark Nelson who's in possession there for East Leeds Tomlinson feeds it into the middle there's no doubting that that is Roy Railton vastly experienced prop plays it 30 metres out it's spun to the middle with Gibbons he then drops it back over his shoulder looking for Kieran Edwards Edwards has been amongst the tries so far this season with two Mentzer alongside Tomlinson oh, Tomlinson elects to kick it forward it's then played off the oh, boot it's shot. and it's popped oh. up they've scored here of uh, East Leeds yeah not cleared away needed to put that into Rosehead to Truth Park it who was the number that touched it down Railton still going second effort inside the 10 metre mark he goes Tomlinson at dummy half as well pointing where he wants his place to go oh, then going the other way He's nipped the other way. Is he down? He is. He he's has through. managed to he's get in. through. He's a cracking bit of dummy yeah. half play from Tomlinson. He sold Spot, that. Yeah, he spotted that gap there and, and just went for it. Well, he sold it, first mm. of all, didn't he? Because he was pointing as if the play was going to come down this left-hand side and then it's like, you've moved, I'm going. <laughs> and now off he went. So, yeah. Um, Brilliant bit of play from Tomlinson. Uh, just on the uh, coming up to the 18 and a half minutes mark. So, uh, uh, the visitors are here at, uh, at Lee taking the lead eight points to four currently in favour of East Leeds this kick to come from Thomas Mims Mims getting ready to comes in goes through and he's converted it yeah so we're uh, just increasing increasing that lead now the next two points tell you what I get the feeling if Cam Clark can get away yeah. from players well, he's, he's, he's done it once hasn't it yeah he, he's yeah. a bit nifty on his feet yeah. isn't he Cam Clark and uh, if he gets the support oh, oh lovely beautiful move. run beautiful run from Callum Hughes gets over the halfway line plays it quickly the last tackle they have run out of tackles Prescott's got it on the last they fed it they've right got to the numbers. Mercer can they be on in the corner oh lovely line. ball oh it's going to be a try is it oh yes he is yes, going to step his move. way over his Aspinall but I tell you what, East Leeds nearly, nearly stopped that move. Yeah, they nearly did. Well, yeah, cracking move, last tattle. Uh, and, uh, could have easily put it to, to the air. Uh, like we said, this wind would have helped brilliantly. But yeah, they had the numbers on this side and, and they've gone in. So Aspinall scoring that one. Unselfish play down this right-hand yeah, side as well. Park, yeah. I mean, you, you look at you look at the position of the game you look at the position on the field you wouldn't have blamed Lee East for just looking up and kicking it towards the touchline would you but yeah. uh, uh, no they had other ideas Prescott had the over or the overhaul call got it ball moving down the right hand side and they were again pretty swift weren't they when they got away yeah and uh, 34 minutes uh, gone p the parking referee decides though that's as that's much as we've got time for so it finishes here 8 points to 10 in favour of the visitors at half time. East Leeds leading by 10 yeah. points to 8 in this one at the yeah. start of the second half. Ball played to Tomlinson. Back to Railton. Railton spins through the first impact. Can't escape the clutches there of Ball, who literally went ball and all with the challenge. Tomlinson spins it right. Right late. Glovely pass that was to Mins. Oh. Mins hit that one like a bullet and surges his way over. There's all smiles amongst the East Leeds side. That was clinical. That yeah. was brilliant. Min's shot ball onto him. And away he went for the try. It was like a bullet, that Parker. It was absolutely like a bullet. Just uh, three minutes played in the second half. And yeah, they've gone... Uh, East Leeds gone another four points further ahead. Min's with the conversion. Awesome. It's between the uprights. Right, so another one. Threats the advantage out to 16 points to eight to the visitors. See what they can get from this. Now spending some time down here. Taylor on the edge of the 20 metre line. Over 120 first team games for Lee Centurions as they were then. And now oh. Lee's trying to... Oh, he's done well there as Callum Hughes. He, yeah. he bounced off the two tacklers. And then went back for seconds. Mims has hurt himself. He's just gone down there. So... Lee East, can they take advantage? They're cutting through because out of dummy do. half. Can they? Really good play from Prescott. He's still weaving and waving his way. And weaving his way all to the line. That is brilliant play from Prescott. Yeah, moving out to this left-hand side. He uh, spotted that Mins had gone down. Yeah. And he's thinking, there's got to be a gap somewhere. And he's weaved and weaved and weaved and found his way yeah, through. And we were saying before about um, uh, pulling this line in shorter. Uh, you know, to, to add, the, add the pressure. So the gap was there. And he's, he's gone. Uh, he's gone over. 
Now, now do you get me? I've been describing him as an excitement machine for the last couple of years, yeah. Kieran Prescott. When he goes, well, he definitely when he gets goes, involved, doesn't man, it? When he gets involved, his it's, it's pace is really good. 12 points to 16 currently. O'Brien tackle underneath the uh, shadow of the posts. Ball across. Charging oh, through his Grainy. Grainy continues. Oh, yes. Continues his scoring drive. It's now four games in succession that Conor Graney has scored for Lee East. And he's leveled proceedings at 16 points each. I tell you what, we've got a, a grandstand finish coming up. I certainly have. And we, like we said at the beginning, it's contrasting styles, isn't it, Parker? Aspinall. Aspinall. He kicks that one. Good kick. Well, you may be able to hear the wind getting up a little bit here. It's uh, Gibbons to Riley. Like Riley out to Hartley. Hartley curving into a, a gap. Oh, he gets the ball out brilliantly. Oh, oh there's a knock-on. Oh. There's a knock-on. He was wow. close. He well, was very, very close. Duckworth had got to the yeah. line. He's not on over the line because this is a tap 20. Yeah. Ten minutes remaining in this one. Two points in it. It's anybody's guess where yeah. this is going. Yeah, I agree. There's loads of banter that's been uh, between the players on the field and the uh, Lee East bench. We're in a privileged position between yeah. the two, aren't we? As oh, Riley, Mims leads. hands off. Mims! Oh, goes past. Mims all the way! Oh, oh. Mims! Oh, he's gone over as Mims! Superb play from the scrum. Two tries now for Thomas Mims. Got to say, his ankle can't be that bad because he shifted pretty quick there. <laughs> that has put... East leads back in front in this one by 20 points to 18. They were dynamic out of the back of yeah. that scrum, weren't 31 they? 31 minutes mark, though, Parky, in the second half. All created by Riley. Yeah. Whoa! He was really impressed. Great movement out on that with that side. Mims in there. As I said before, I think they, they were keen to get him strapped up, get that anchor fixed to get him back on the park. Well, when, you, when, when, when you've got someone like that who has so much experience who, let's be honest, can still play. Yeah, he can still ball. play superbly. Yeah. Yeah. He's got so much know-how. You want to get the ball in his hands, don't yeah. you? Yeah. And they did it superbly from the back of that scrum. Brilliant, brilliant play. So they're in front by 20 points to 18. Mim's just setting up now to uh, see if he can add the extras once again to his, uh, his try. Ball falls off its tee. That'll slow proceedings down. Never like um, Yorkshire Tea Parker. There's not a lot, not a lot of time left in this one. Not a massive amount. No, it's about what, eight minutes, is there? It's Mims. Oh, he's only gone and converted that one as well. That pushes them four points in front. Eighteen points to twenty-two now. Will they use the forwards here and uh, try and drive over on either side of that post? Well, Tomlinson dives forward like from have. dummy half. Done just that. Brilliant bit of play from Dummy Half as well from Tomlinson. Do you know what? He's been in there quite a few times at uh, Dummy Half and puts a good pass out, but that time he's spotted the gap and has gone in on the left-hand side of the post. It's the largest gap that we've had between the teams, isn't it? Yeah. I think Mims will uh, just take his time taking this kick. I've got to... Uh, coming up to 37 minutes, so yeah, three minutes plus whatever time's going to be added on. So 18 points to 26, kick to come. Three minutes left. Or thereabouts. So when he comes. And Mims kicks the goal as well. It. Takes it to uh, 28 points to 18 for uh, the visitors East Leeds. Fourth goal of the game as well as far as he's concerned. Mm. Thomas Mins. Two tries in the piece as well. He's been so important hasn't he yeah, to this. Yeah. Uh, what, what's uh, increasingly looking like it's going to be a, a win for the visitors. Yeah. Now Tomlinson. Takes the ball in again, driving there from dummy half. Good 10 12 oh, metres yeah, game as well. Yeah, it's low centre of gravity, stocky built uh, player. Oh, there's an opportunity if he can find an yeah, offload here for yeah. Riley. He is going to be tackled. And, and there it is. Goes to his lips, goes to the whistle. East Leeds have won this one by 28 points to 18. Wow, it's a bit of cracking game that it we've has. seen this afternoon. 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. We talk because we care. I'll tell you what, it was a cracking game, though, oh, wasn't it? Was, it? A, was a, a very enjoyable. There was some, some really good tries scored. Uh, and, and as I've mentioned before, Mins was so important. They did everything they could to get him back on the field, oh, didn't yeah. they, after he went down with that injury? Yeah, it was it was important, that because you could see... Uh, don't get me wrong, um, 
he's a good player. There's no way from the buts about it. And they, they would miss him from that point of view. But I think a little bit of sort of like, oh, you know, our, our comfort blanket has sort of gone off to a certain degree. Yeah. Uh, and, the, 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 you know, then Lee started to get a little bit more momentum and started to, you know, sort of show signs of, you know, we, we can win this. And to be fair, I think if he, if he hadn't come back on, Lee probably would have pinched that, to, to, to be honest. But like I said, at, at the time when, when we were commentating Parker, it, it was a clash of, uh, of uh, different uh, uh, setups, wasn't it? You know, you sort of, you, you got the uh, East who were very mobile and very quick, with Prescott coming in there from the from the back, when when he got found a gap, his pace was absolutely blistering, and then obviously from the other side, uh, East Leeds, they were a, a big pack, robust dr- driving down the middle, making the yards. Uh, uh, so it was how each combated each style. And, and it was really good to watch. And an old school hooker as well in Tom yeah. Tomlinson, who, who I thought was very, very effective. Mm. I had a bit of a chat with him in the bar afterwards. Uh, and I said, you know what? I recognise your name. Where have, you, where have you played before, mate? And he said, oh, I did like a few years at Hunslet. And yeah. I was like, that's it. That's where I've seen his name before. But he had that know-how. Um, and good to hear him get back to the East because he did quite a bad injury there mm. a few years ago. Um, so he's got back out there at Lee East and uh, come away with the points. Just for clarity as well, the first try that East Leeds scored was scored by the back rower Ryan Woofit um, yeah. uh, as well. That was the that which came from the kick and it rebounded all over the place. But he put himself in a really good position to chase the. Yeah, and, and it's got to be said that uh, East Leeds have got a very good pack. Oh, that, yeah. that is a, a really good. You know, we were on about men, men the, you know, sort of. I suppose to a certain extent stealing the show to us uh, uh, a point but uh, the platform was set by you know that that pack all around and Thomas and Dirt in the in, in the center of things uh, was yeah re- was key so that one finished Lee East 18 East Leeds 28 and after the match I caught up with East Leeds boss Rob Roberts great to catch up with him by the way okay uh, I'm with Rob Roberts We've got to the end of this game. It's a great win that for you, old boys. 28 points to 18. Uh, I thought it was a bit of a, a contrast in styles and your you old school for the East, really. Yeah, I, I think we, we've had a four-week break since our last win at the sea and a um, couple of lads away. Uh, and this is the first game of block of five that we've targeted. Uh, this was obviously the biggest one, I think, out of the five. Um, so to come away to the East uh, and get the two points is massive. Um, we came without, we only came with 16 players and we only had one half back for the full game. So, I mean, I know Lee said it's been away, it's been doing well, but it was, we showed a lot of character, a lot of character. Oh, I would agree. And, and having a chat with Luke, who got to us, you told you got swimming for you, I didn't realise his journey's been in and out, hasn't he? He's only just come back playing rugby league. Yeah, so Tomo played here two years ago, I think, once before COVID, and he, I think he snapped his tendon from his, his bicep away from his arm, and he wasn't going to play again, but... We're operating on a, probably a squad of 23, which is not good enough. We don't have no second team now, so we are really struggling for numbers. So Tom has done a real, a real big feat. He's come out of retirement um, and put his body on the line, as he does every single game. That's, that's in three games, he's got two more matches. It just shows the quality of the player. Uh, and to be fair as well, if he plays like that, it doesn't matter what the number says on his, on his, uh, on his birth certificate, does it? Uh, uh, do, do you know what? I think it's the fit, the older he gets, I think it's the fittest he's, he's, he's ever been in his career. I don't think, I mean, the 10 minutes did him good in the pinks, he probably needed a rest, but for 70 minutes, for, you know, for a guy who'll tell you he's not old, but he's knocking on a little bit, he's done really well. Uh, I've got to say as well, though, I thought, again, it was your front row, it was your other front row, which, yeah, I thought you, you you kept it tight when you had to, and then obviously it helps when you've got a weapon like Mins, who's done it at Super Bowl. Yeah, like, like, like. I mean, you, you look at the right edge, we came out, he's played a bit of prone. Duckworth on the wing of Mins, I mean, it, it is important, it is important. The only thing that we struggled with, I thought we were very clunky because we only had one half back. <laughs> Kai, Kai didn't Hartley, um, it was his first game up full back today, and he hasn't trained with us all week. So, again, that 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 made our attack very clunky, but like I say, for it to be like that and still get the two points, we were over the moon. It really has been a case of big stealing and borrowing then this week for you, hasn't it? Oh, Huge. I, I'll be honest with you, mate. We we trained on Thursday with ten players, right. uh, and and we lost a player this morning. 
so it, it shows you the resilience that we've showed today and the character that you've got within your squad that there's still guys that are going to put their hand up and say yeah. we're going to do a job for you oh massively I mean we, we get five back next week um, obviously it's a home game so the players tend to seem to come back for the home game but we started on minus four points that's the first two points on the board now and I haven't looked at results but we're still unbeaten so do you know we want to win the league and I think it will be a massive a massive achievement if we do it starting on minus four I would agree with you, you know, because uh, I mean, like, I, I know it was well documented about last season, and I don't want to go there, and I don't yeah. want to take you back there because this is a new season, new outlook, new thought. You've got people yeah. who, are, who are interested, they obviously care very deeply about the club that yeah. are involved, and I know from speaking to you how much this club means to you. Well, mate, if it wasn't this club when I joined this club at eight years old, I wouldn't have and met the friends that I know here today, coming back to Lee and obviously playing for Lee and, you know, going around the world, Australia, New Zealand, meeting friends all over the world. This club gave me that. So it's only right that I put it back now. And we've made sure now that we haven't under 18 for four years. It's the first time we've had under 18 in four years. So we've had nothing coming through. We now have introduced a club session with our 16s and 18s in open age. That will do monthly. So when the 16s move to 18s and 18s move to open age, that transition's easier. And they all know each other's names and they're all, they're all tight with it. You know what is really good? Because you were telling me right at the end of last season, this is what you were wanting to implement. And yeah. it's there, it's in black and white now. People's turning up for these sessions. Yeah, right? it's coming to fruition now. Uh, we've got, I think, we've 25 18s and there's probably 23, 24 16s. So that come there, though, when some of your players like Tom Ward, you don't want to pull the pin, we've got something coming through. Because last year it showed. Do not be able to fulfill two fixtures last year. Although we did fulfill them, but not on the days of sports. It's it's not great, and it's not great for the game. It's not great for our club. Um, you know, so I, I'm I'm really looking forward because you know, a couple of years ago, through our show, we pinpointed East Leeds because we saw you. I think it was win that shield during COVID time. That's right against Crop Face. Against yeah. Crop Face, and we thought this is a team that's going somewhere. Yeah. You know, and, and unfortunately, what's happened has happened, and circumstances yeah. have come into effect. We had the whole COVID situation as well, yeah, which yeah. obviously is a knock on to that. Yeah. Where I get the feeling that you're at the start of that journey again and it's going to build up. So, similar to like I've seen with yeah, Crop yeah. Face myself, yeah. where this year they're making through a lot of their 18s, you're going to be able to do that over the coming years, aren't you? I, I, I really do hope so, Park. I mean, like I say, with the 18s going through now, we might get an influx of 10 players. Do you know, and then hopefully, you, we, we've got to look at our juniors that. I worry about the junior kids that go to pro clubs and then they get discarded because they do, in my opinion, they get discarded and they get lost to the game. So our aim as a club is to get our juniors back that have gone to pro. Today we've got four that have been in pro that have come back and they're still young. And that, that's our aim, to get our 18s to come through, to get these lads that get let go by pro clubs and build that East Leeds troop spirit that we have. And that's the thing, because so many of these guys, they can still offer so much, and they can offer so much guidance to these young kids that you've got uh, coming through. The, 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 poor, the poor lads think the career's done at 19, 20 year old. And that's rubbish, isn't and it? it's bizarre to think yeah. that, but I suppose, you know, to their friendship group, it looks like that. You haven't made it at the Rhinos, you haven't made it at Warrington. And it's, it's a little bit of an embarrassment for them, but if we can offer that halfway back into it, and they can make the new friendship with the older open age and the new 18s, we're all winning. 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. Discussing the greatest game at all grassroots levels. I always enjoy speaking to Rob. Just going to say exactly. Do you know what I mean? He's great value, oh, isn't yeah, he? And, 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 and I share some of his, some of his thoughts. He's you right. know, and, yeah. and <laughs> he's just so passionate. And you can understand why his teams run through brick walls for him, can't yeah. you? And, and to, to be honest, they missed having him. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that, during that spell, that they were, uh, you know, uh, not do, uh, at the best. They, they certainly missed him because you've only got to have a look. That suddenly he's come back, and, and like you've just said, this players all run through brick walls uh, for, for him. Uh, that pack is is, is really really good, uh, and obviously, uh, you know, with, with the structure they have in and around it, and for such a small squad. It's it's really really good. Uh, the one one effort took because every time we, we've been and uh, he's been on the touchline because he gets very animated on the touchline, doesn't he? Doesn't he, Rob? Uh, and I, I, it was funny because the other day there was the uh, uh, Chelsea ladies versus the Arsenal ladies. Okay. Yeah, and the Chelsea's ladies uh, uh, manager 
complained about the opposition manager, who was a male, on the touchline, and I thought, who oh, she's not met Rob Roberts, she would complain. <laughs> oh, you just don't do it. You, you, you know what, though? There was a bit where you were shouting on the field, and he went and he said, sorry if you can hear me, Pac. <laughs> That's right. <too. laughs> Which I thought was really funny. It was really funny. Um, no, I mean, like... He's passionate. That's the thing. He's passionate. That's, that's what I that's love. That's his involvement about that, it. That's yeah. what I love. And as a result, that's what his team is. His team mm. has passion. His team has drive. Mm. Uh, and I again, I get the feeling that with these young players that are coming through, he's mentioned there about there being a good squad of under 16s mm. players, a good squad of under 18s players. This is the conveyor belt that you need. There's mm. players that are coming through the lower age groups as well. And it sounds like he's making a beeline for the guys that are at the pro clubs at the moment yeah. who may not get offered further contracts because, as as he said there, they've still got a lot to offer. Yeah, and we've said this time and time again, at this particular moment, that might not be their time. Mm. But, as we're saying, everybody doesn't, not mature, but, you know, it doesn't always go that you reach an age, so, right, you're the finished article. You've only got to look further down the line. You know, a couple of players that have I've, I've got Alex Wormsley is one who we always sort of reference. You know, how old was he before he, he sort of moved over and and, and started playing uh, with the big boys, as it were? Exactly. You know, so it can it can happen, and yeah. it can happen from when people think that the time's been and gone. Mm. Um, you know, and your time hasn't been and gone. You can still offer, you can still enjoy your rugby league. Uh, and that's certainly what we want to do and why we go to the games that we do, don't we? We certainly do. And it was a great game. Great game. Day, day was a little bit blustery, which probably added to the excitement of it as well because there was a little bit of uh, drama when it comes to the goal kicking, like we were saying. Uh, but yeah, I, and it was good because I, 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 first time I'd been down to Lee's, drove past the ground many a time but never actually been you know to the ground and into the clubhouse it's a lovely clubhouse there really really nice top notch great pitch great facilities uh you know once you've completed your risk assessment form you've you've, you've no problem <laughs> but that's another story we that, won't that go into another story yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll include it in our uh, outtake show come the end of the season i feel you know who you are right <laughs> premier division um, mm. Because we've got fixtures to go through um, before we finish the show. So in the Premier Division this weekend, it's Egremont at home to Lock Lane. It's Rochdale Mayfield hosting Hunslet. That's going to be an absolute humdinger. As is this next one, yeah. Thato Heath Crusaders up against Siddle. Siddle. Yeah. Uh, and then we heard Don Weir talking about it. Kells on the road, but it's only a short trip over to Wathbro Hornets. West Bowling, they host Hewarth uh, in a clash of the two promoted sides or two of the three promoted mm. sides from Division 1 last season. And West Hull host uh, the York Acorn side. In Division 1, we've got Dewsbury Moor Maroons hosting Lee Miners Rangers. In Rose Bridge, they're at home to Clockface Miners. That's a game that's actually going to be taking place tomorrow evening. Uh, so I'm hoping to head over to that one after work. Uh, to, to take in the action so uh, yeah I'll, I'll come back with a report on mm. that next week Alton Raiders they're hosting Crossfield Skirl will go over to Stanningley and Hull Dockers are the latest side to check in at Waterhead Warriors over at Wolston Rovers well it's only Wigan St Pat's that are in town I think that was one that you were looking at possibly checking out yeah, at the weekend I'll probably sort of slip down and have a look at that one in Division 2, uh, we've had a swap round in this one. So originally Dewsbury Celtic were due to host Pilkington Rex, but due to the state of the pitches, yes, AD, I mentioned in the weather yet again, um, Pilkington Rex have stepped up and says we can host. And I, I like this. This is clubs working together to ensure that the games go on and we don't end up with huge backlog fixtures that have to take place. Uh, it's a clash of the Cumbrian lads, Millham against Ellenborough Rangers, Mighton Warriors hosting Wigan St. Jude's. Oldham St. Anne's making the short hop across the Pennines to Normanton Knights. And Saddleworth Rangers, meanwhile, they host Thornhill Trojans. Uh, there was due to be a game between Shawcross Sharks and Barrow Island. But unfortunately, that has been cancelled due to uh, a waterlogged pitch at Shawcross. And uh, we know from going to that venue... 
it is at the bottom of a hill mm-hmm. off the main road. Yeah. So uh, lovely yeah. little ground, though. Oh, cracking really? ground. Yeah, cracking ground. Uh, Division three. Well, that sees Dissington host Featherstone Lions. Bentley travel over to East Leeds. Uh, Lee East have a long road trip up to Hensingham and Beverly they're away at Milford some standout fixtures this year this this year some standout fixtures this year there's plenty of standout fixtures this year but this week in particular yeah. there's some which catch the eye um, you know I'm looking at that Hensingham and Lee East because I think Hensingham have really come together as a, as a club this year that's going to be tough for Lee East I think so say. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And then if I'm looking from the uh, the division above, I'm looking right at that Saddleworth Rangers and Thornhill Trojans game as one to look out for. Uh, in Division 1, I'm looking at Jewsby Moore against uh, Lee Miners Rangers. And then, you well, know... Well, that's the top of the table clash, that isn't it? That's the big Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'm also picking out Rochdale Mayfield against Hunslet. Mm. It, uh, that Jewsby Lee Miners one, if Jewsby can win that, they put a... Bit of a gap there between uh, them and uh, the Miners and Crossfields as well, though. They do. Well, yeah. um, if we look at the top of the Premier Division, Hunslet are top. Four wins from their five games, a draw from their other one. West Hull second, Rochdale Mayfield third, Siddle in fourth with York Acorn in fifth alongside the draw specialists of Kells. In Division 1, Dewsbury Moor Maroons unbeaten currently with five out of five. As you mentioned, Lee Miners Rangers second with three wins out of five. Crossfield tucked in just behind with three wins out of five. All looking very competitive in Division 1 and not a lot between the top and the bottom sides. Similar sort of story in Division 2 as well, but you've got Shawcross who are top of the tree. They could be joined at the weekend by Wigan St. Jude's, uh, who uh, will be looking to uh, win first and foremost, but get a few points uh, to aid their point difference. Dewsby Celtic uh, tucked in in third spot. Normanton Knights in fourth. Uh, Oldham St. Allen's in fifth. Thornhill Trojans currently in sixth. Propping up the table is Might and Warriors, but Saddleworth and Pilks also have one win apiece. And then Division 3, you've got Driglington, top of the tree. Three wins from the first four games. Hensingham in second place with three wins from their first four. Dissington moving down to third as a result of not playing last weekend. Three wins from the first four games. Lee East tucked in fourth with East Leeds. Importantly, picking up those first two points of the season because they've wiped out now the points that they were deducted. Uh, still which, unbeaten. And still unbeaten, mm-hmm. three out of three. So, yeah, it's all warming up quite nicely, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's starting taking shape, as we always say. I mean, you, you look you look at the difference between the, the old split into like three little blocks, don't they? Uh, but like we always say again, it's... You know, a couple of wins and you move up and down, and a couple of losses you move up and down so so easily in in these divisions. And I think that's what makes it interesting and and, and sort of engrossing all the way because it's one of those things where because of the the relegation issues as well, you know, the this you know that jeopardy and dramas there at both ends of the table. So plenty of dramas, mm. twists and turns to come. Uh, and who knows, we may even see the sort of pace and see Kieran Prescott opening those legs, like I mentioned in the commentary. Right, before I say anything else, we're off. We certainly are. <laughs> 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. We talk because we care. Every tackle, every try, every scrum. Green Cooling is proud to be part of the Community Rugby League family.